But hey, uh, obviously we know how um, detrimental you guys felt, specifically the Bulls felt when, when you went to health and protocol at the end of the year. So w- when that happened again last week, were you like, I mean, are you got to be kidding me? Or did you instantly, were you told, hey, this is a short term thing. Don't, you know, don't stress. I mean, what was your mindset when you when you had to go back into it again? Well, I was a little shocked. Um, obviously didn't think I could get it. Obviously I didn't, but um, I, they have to be careful with everybody, including the team and everybody coming over here. So it made sense. And I just had to do a, <laughs> pretty much just do my time and, uh, you know, jump through a couple hoops to get here. Thank you. Next up is uh, Casey Johnson, and then we'll go to Brian Winors. Hey, Zach, uh, speaking of those hoops, can you kind of talk logistically about how you got over there because you weren't with the rest of the team? Did you fly by yourself? Did you have some people with you? Or what, what was that experience like? Yeah, I had a quarantine for a couple of days, get a numerous amount of negative tests, um, flew to LA and then flew to uh, then flew to Tokyo on a uh, on a regular flight. But there's really nobody there, so I think just because of the the lockdown, they're not letting a lot of people into Tokyo. There might have been six people on the entire flight, so felt like a private flight. <laughs> and and in, in light of all that and all that you experienced, and you know, taking it back to the to the Bulls season and probably some thoughts you're going through there, what was what was experiencing your first air opening ceremony like after all that you'd been through? It was uh, it was really cool, really powerful. Um, just being around all the athletes from all the other countries and all the different sports, and uh, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's a uh, it's a giant event with a lot of history, and uh, I just try to soak it all in. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, Zach. Long day, though, I'll tell you that. And hot. Yeah. Next up is Brian Windhorst, and then we'll go to Grady Diaz. Hey, Zach. Um, so this is a really strange situation where you've got um, teammates still on their way. Mm-hmm. How much are you expecting them? As you, What are you guys preparing for tomorrow? Like, you expecting them to play a lot? Um, come in and, like, take minutes right off the bat? What are you expecting? I don't know. I mean, we obviously know they're in shape. Um, they're tired. Yeah, he's went through a roller coaster of emotion. Um, you know, guys being in the finals. So, yeah, I'm not, you know, someone to say, should they be playing or should they? I think them coming over here is showing how much they're committed and how much they want to play and um, just contribute. So, I think they'll be ready to go and we'll see what happens. But uh, as for the team, I think we have to be ready for everything. If they're not ready to go, then we have to uh, go out there and perform still. As Pop explained, because, you know, you've been getting starts. You played really well in Vegas. These guys are perimeter players. Has Pop explained what your role might be with these guys uh, coming? I mean, I think mine's still the same. You know, it's just whatever I got to get done, you know, do it. We're not all going to be playing our regular starter minutes. You know, I might come off the bench some games. I might start some games. But, you know, I'm here to bring energy. You know, obviously when I need to score, put the ball in the hoop, I can do that. But, um I'm trying to bring a lot of energy and change the pace of the game, pick up guys, be a menace out there. All right, thanks. Grady, you're up, and then we'll go to Joe Barton. Hey, Zach. Um, as a first-time Olympian, how much pride are you taking in playing for Team USA? Yeah, a lot. I mean, you're playing for your country, and it's a uh, way different game than the NBA. It's a uh, – I think I said this earlier, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You get to see this as a kid growing up and – so many different memories of watching all the players you looked up to do this and, and go through it as well. So it's uh, it's a little surreal knowing that you're here um, and then going to have to go out there and, uh, you know, produce and help the team win. Obviously, we have one goal and uh, it starts tomorrow. Have you had any pinch me moments since you've been in Tokyo? Um, you know, I've been just trying to soak everything in. I don't know about like pinch me moments. I stay I stay in the moment pretty well. I understand the, the magnitude of it and everything that we're doing but it's a uh, like I said it was a little surreal just walking through like we did the opening ceremony yesterday and just seeing how many people were there and um the history and it's just like oh wow like I'm really here so I guess that could be a pinch me moment thank you Joe go ahead and then we'll go to uh Tyler Boronski hey Zach um <laughs> Brian may know something I don't. He actually probably does. Uh, but were, were the finals guys there today? No, I think they're actually on a flight right now. So, you know, I think they'll be here. Uh, I think they'll be landing in Tokyo soon. 
Okay. It's just, it's hard to keep track of the different time zones now yeah. as you, you have lived. <laughs> hey, I'm just going to ask, and I apologize. Um, did, how did you wind up in the protocol? Was it a false positive or were you a contact tracer? Yeah, it was a contact trace, make sure everything was safe and made sure that everything uh, with the team, me getting over here, everything was uh, clear. So I didn't want to put anybody at harm. I didn't want to be at harm. So we just had to make sure everything was okay before I got here. And then the last one for me, and thank you, um, you know, you've lived it in the early part of camp and you guys lost those first two games, kind of puts everybody on notice. The team you play tomorrow, France, is pretty good and, and actually beat the Americans in the, in the world cup. How, how much um, has that been talked about, about what happened two years ago in China against France and how dangerous they, they actually are. I mean, we know how good they are, but we also know how good we are too. Um, you know, we, we, we went over the film and we understand what they do, but I think we're more focused on what we do. Cause if we do what we do good, I don't think there's any team out here that's going to come close to us. So, um, as long as we go out there, execute, be ourselves, be Team USA, I think we'll be all right. Thank you. Tyler, you're up. Hey, Zach. Um, how much of a, I guess, do you feel like you're, you know, you're back up to speed, you're getting your rhythm again after, you know, the bit of the delay and you talked about just the challenges of getting, you know, over here. So how much do you feel like, you know, basketball wise, you're, you're, back on you know the rhythm you were before in Vegas and you know with the team as well yeah I feel fine um you know I had to sit out a couple of days and with some extra travel and things like that but it's nothing that we're not used to obviously just a, a much longer flight than we're all used to I think we're all still adjusted to the time change and um you know the travel and things like that but you know for basketball once we get on the court I think I'm all right and uh Ready to go team wise. We haven't changed a lot. I know we might have put in an extra play or something like that, but I can catch on pretty fast. I'll get a reminder if you have a, a question, raise your hand and you'll be called on. Uh, next up is Fago Franklin. Is he muted? Fago, are you muted? Can you hear me? There you go. Can now, yes. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. How you doing today? I'm doing good, my man. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. Uh, we talk about connecting as people and uniting together. How was the experience seeing all the countries showing each other love and support when fans are not in the stands? Yeah, it was really cool. Um, you know, we're all here doing the same thing, um, going out here representing our countries and all in different sports, different times. So it's a... Uh, so I open it just to see the support you have from all these other countries, uh, the respect you give each other. And then, you know, knowing you're going out here still fighting for the same thing as your country and your pride as well. So um, as athletes, I think we respect that by each other. During the pandemic, what did you learn about yourself adapting to the new norm? Uh, just cherish family, um, you know, make sure you tell your loved ones and, you know, tell them, you know, talk to them every day and uh, tell them you love them and, you know, don't, uh, you know, we get so used to, you know, things being normal, you know, how it was. And when those things are taken away from you, it, it's it's different. So, you know, adjusting has been hard for all of us, but just uh, you know, don't don't uh, don't overreact to, you know, things like that. And my last question is, you do a lot for your community. What does it mean for you to be a role model for the youth? It's big, man. Uh, I mean, I remember looking up to people in the same position I was, you know, when I was younger, I was, in the sixth grade, I remember, you know, watching Kobe Bryant, LeBron James um, on the court in like 2008 when I was a little kid in sixth grade yelling their names and now I'm in the same position. So um, just to see the smile, smiles on people's faces, um, you know, how you affect them, what you do, you know, you really are, you know, things, you know, people that, you know, you look up to them. So it's a, it's a big thing. And, uh, you know, I take pride in that. I just want to set the right example and, uh, you know, who I am and what I represent. Thank you. Next up is Casey Jones, and then uh, we'll go to Grady Diaz. That's Casey Johnson to you, Craig, but thanks. Oh, for yeah, sorry. Casey <laughs> Jones. 
<laughs> I'm just messing with you, Craig. Hey, uh, Zach, um, I want, I know it's a huge event, but did you, did you get a chance to run across uh, Sato at the opening ceremony? And what do you, what do you think about him being the flag bearer for, for the Czech Republic? I haven't, I haven't seen Sato. I saw his picture on Instagram. I liked it, but uh, I didn't see him, man. I'm excited to. Um, excited to play his team. You know, he's, he does a lot for his country and he represents it really well. So very happy for him. Thanks, man. Sorry about that, Casey. Make it up for the other day, I guess. I gave you too much credit. All good. <laughs> All good. All Casey Jones during the season. <laughs> um, our final final question will come from Grady Diaz. Go ahead, Grady. Hey, again. Um, I know you guys aren't staying in the Olympic Village, but have you guys had a chance to, to get there, maybe eat at the cafeteria or anything like that? No, we went over there uh, before the ceremonies. We took some pictures. Um, Took some pictures with other the other athletes. Got to see what they were doing, and um, you know, just walked around the site, and it was a uh, it was really cool, different experience than what we're used to, but it, it was really cool. So, like I said, we we talked, we mingled with all the other athletes, sort of you know gave respect, and uh, you know took pictures. So it was really cool to go out there and experience that, just like they were. Thank you.